Hi Hobby Friends! True metallic gold that looks great, takes no time at all and doesn't use an airbrush. That's what we're doing this week. Step 1. Get yourself some custodies primed in black and given a zenithal spritz in a dark, coolish green like this one. This is a spray can job for you airbrush free folk, but don't skip on that zenithal green as you'll see later in some close up shots, that green base is what makes this whole paint scheme really sing. Then you're going to need some metallics, at least three, but really the more the merrier. These metal and alchemy gold paints from Scale 75 are hands down the best brush on metallics I've ever used, and the sets you can get are really well thought out as well, so if I were you I'd treat myself. And don't worry, all those paints are listed in the description. Next up we need a nice big soft brush and something to smoosh paint on. I use these cork tiles since they're great for basing too, but a paper towel, a bit of card or basically anything will do and we're dry brushing. Get the brush nicely loaded up with paint, then rub it off until it's almost all gone and swish that over your model, trying to concentrate on a top-down motion. You may be wondering where these custard guards have come from. I mean, I doubt you are, but I am going to tell you anyway. My brother, let's call him Chris because that's his name, sent them to me for some reason. Not for my birthday, or Christmas, or Chinese New Year, he asked me if custodies were quote, good, and when I said no one in 40k is good, but they are hard as nails, he sent me the combat patrol box. My suspicion is he's living out his Warhammer fantasy through me, or maybe he is even kidding himself that I'll give them to him now that they're all painted up nicely, but whatever the reason, thanks brother, this was fun. Right, first layer is done and it's now time to work on the next layer. Viking gold is what I went for, a lovely rich, almost coppery tone that has a good temperature contrast with the previous layers. As you might imagine, we're going to start narrowing down the area we hit with the paint now. This is only layer 2, so we're still covering a lot, but we're leaving out downward facing bits and even missing the feet. I'm not just dry brushing to please the airbrushless friends here by the way, I genuinely think this is the best way to paint metallics. Or well, it depends what exactly you want. If you're looking for clean, almost chrome-like finishes, bring out the airbrush for sure. I even have a video on that, I'll link it at the end of this one. But if you want ancient, textured, rich metallics, metallics that look like they've seen 10,000 years or more of war, well then the dry brush is your friend. No such thing as a free lunch though, the technique may be simple and fast, but you will still need to layer up multiple different shades. Here comes the next one now, Dwarf Gold. We're really concentrating on those higher, upper surfaces now. Generally, the biggest mistake you can make with true metallic gold is assuming the paint will do any of the lighting work for you. Sure, it's shiny, but you still have to work on highlights and shadows just like any other paint. Here comes the last of the dry brushed golds, Peridot Alchemy. This is for where I think things would really catch the light. All this dry brushing is leaving us with an enormous amount of tiny micro textures that read as scratches, weathering, shading, tarnish, everything emerging from the off maligned but occasionally ideal dusty dry brush patina. Time for more refined work now though, with a little brush and some citrine alchemy I'm going in and hitting some of the edges, once again mostly focused up top. Metallics are pretty forgiving with this sort of edge highlight, where the sparkle helps mask transitions. We still want to be conscious of our placement though, always reinforcing that top down lighting. Last of the metallics now, and we're jumping over to silver, a nice bright silver, namely speed metal from scale 75. This is, if you like, the second edge highlight colour. The silver is effectively acting as a white wood in a non-metallic scheme, really making our edges pop. Also great for adding some subtle scratches here and there. Ok, so we've gone all the way up, now it's time to go all the way back down again. In my little cup there I have some nicely thinned burnt umber oil paint. 
The application is somewhere between recess shading and filtering. I'm not slathering it all over like I would with a full wash, but I'm not aiming exclusively for panel lines and the like either. I'm letting the oil paint filter the existing gold here and there, leaving some recesses bare green and other areas nicely gunked up with oil paint. It's a relaxed, painterly wash. Okay, when that's dry, about an hour was good enough for my purposes this time, it's time to up the grime on these grim dark boys. What you're looking for here is a nice dark reddish matte brown. The matte bit is really key there. We're going to sponge this on here and there in little splodges, and that matte finish contrasting with the shiny gold is what really lifts the whole look. I mean, sure, custodies are supposed to be the Emperor's finest, clad in aureate armour of unequalled quality, but this is the grimdark future, friends, and frankly, that line sounds a little bit like Imperial propaganda to me. This armour is like 10,000 years old. Humans weren't even mining gold 10,000 years ago in our history, so we can only guess how beaten up a 10,000 year old bit of gold armour would get. And that is almost all of our chunky golden boys done. Everything from here on is detail work, like their hair, the bajillion gems, all that stuff. I even wrote this custodian's little essay on how great the Emperor is for him. Solid gold chunky chaps are all well and good, but these little details and different blocks of colour are really what put the bow tie on the kitten, so to speak. Just before we hit the final shots though, I want to give out a big thanks to my wonderful patrons. If everything's gone to plan, a group of us just finished our very first GRG hobby clinic, learning and sharing everything we know about airbrushing. If you fancy supporting the channel like those golden folk, check out the link below. And just a simple click of the like and a comment if you're enjoying the video is a fantastic way to help more people find this tutorial. If you like watching painting tutorials, but you don't like painting yourself, well, I can always sort you out with a commission as well. Just follow the links to my website. All right, let's take a look at these boys. Oh yeah, that is some gnarly patinaed gold, and all done in something like 10 hours or so. And the gold bit of that goes so fast, it gives you plenty of time to work on details like this. But maybe 10 hours sounds like a lot for a speed paint. In truth, it only took that long because I had to spend some of those hours on these guys too. Yeah, okay, you might be thinking, but what about the rest of the box? What about those women of the Ordo Investigates? Well, you'll have to wait for next time for those quiet ladies. In the meantime, check out the links to my socials, give that thumbs up a click for me, and thank you for watching.